How is it possible to tell the story of the founding of America, but ignore those circumstances and events that cannot be explained, apart from the hand of God? From Washington's crossing, not far from the studio, through so many other wars and battles, to the freeing of enslaved people, and then the recognition of their full rights as citizens. In every great scene of this epic story is evidence of God and the pleading prayers of the Americans. Courage and action informed by the Bible. That's why faith and liberty are inseparable. Tonight, we'll talk to the man responsible for making sure that in America's first capital, Philadelphia, that story is preserved and told for a new generation. Stay with us. Rob Wonderling has held many titles in his years in and out of government, including service as a member of the state Senate. But it's his new post as director of the Faith and Liberty Discovery Center that it surprised more than a few insiders. A politician with a bright future leading a museum on faith? Why? And why now? And, and why does he even care? We'll ask Rob. But first, take a look inside Philadelphia's newest attraction, this state-of-the-art storytelling experience on Independence Mall, Faith and Liberty Discovery Center. Rob Wunderling was a prominent state senator with a reputation as a serious, thoughtful legislator. He resigned to take a job as head of the Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce, another big role. Then a surprise announcement that he'd take a job as head of a new, a new museum, Faith and Liberty Discovery Center. Rob, why'd you say yes? What was it that made this the right move for you and your family? Well, Joe, uh, first, thanks for having me and uh, thanks for showing the video of our award-winning Faith and Liberty Discovery Center. Yeah, very exciting. Uh, it was in God's plan. It was not in my plan, <laughs> as life is normally the case. Yeah. And what was in the plan going back to the year 2018 was a decision that was... Uh, with my wife and I, we prayed about our future together, and I felt very strongly back then that the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia really needed a different type of leader uh, for the future. I'd been there about 13 years, and I felt that I could still be in greater service to him. I uh, still had quite a little bit more energy in the tank and uh, wanted to, uh, to really go on a journey where I could be in ser service to, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I didn't expect a pandemic to happen <laughs> in between. And even, uh, even as I was mustering out and went through a process of leadership succession at the Chamber of Commerce, 
Chris and I still didn't really know what God had in store for us and uh, dabble here, uh, go do things there. At one point, Kristen said, well, why don't you just retire? And I said, well, I don't think that'll be good for either you or I. <laughs> but uh, that's how God works. Yeah. And so what's your faith journey? I mean, you're, you're a native of Pennsylvania. Right. My wife and I both grew up in Lebanon County. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had an interesting faith journey. My grandfather from Western Pennsylvania was one of these sort of old fashioned fire and brimstone Methodist pastors. And at Christmas and particularly Easter, we had to sit in the family pew in the front row. And I swear to God, he was trying to <laughs> exercise all the demons in this young uh, rebellious uh, teenager. And I, I got off a path like everybody tends to do, particularly in my uh, undergraduate years in college. Chris and I reunited. We got married and it was through my brother-in-law that I really had a moment uh, where I felt that, although I understood at a, at a head level, I didn't really fully comprehend at a, at a heart level what it meant to uh, understand the price that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ paid by taking our sins to the cross to be redeemed in a moment, to have this everlasting life with a loving God through the Holy Spirit and through the blood of Christ. And from there, that journey, like everybody's faith journey, was not a smoothly paved road, but it was one in which I always attempted to serve and love others. Uh, I Is that why you got into politics? I mean, was that part of your... Well, I didn't intend to get into politics. Uh, that was uh, totally unexpected. Um, going way back in time, uh, I'm a registered Republican. We reside in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, and the leading candidate at the time was an open seat. Had very surprisingly had dropped out of the race. And I think I was the seventh or eighth person they called with very little time uh, to run for the office. I was serving as an officer at a privately held engineering software company. Life was good. Uh, it was not in our plan. And met with you know, the political leadership uh, around the Pennsylvania State Senate. Took several days to sort of sort out if it made sense for us. No one gave us any chance of winning the primary, let alone the general election. That was a year when the very popular go uh, Mayor Ed Rendell was running for governor, mm -hmm. particularly in southeastern Pennsylvania where we reside. And uh, we never even thought we'd have enough names on a petition to get our name on the ballot, to be honest. That was a miracle weekend. I'm laying in bed around midnight on that weekend, the petitions are doing. I said, well, Kristen, this will be the shortest campaign in history because <laughs> we're not even gonna get out of the gate. And I really enjoyed public service. I was never a really good politician. I love policy. I love serving constituents. Our motto in the state Senate was uh, serving our community, putting our communities first. I had these deep beliefs about faith but I also have a deep belief in the Republic and the constitutional form of government that we have that uh, protects liberty. And now to be in this role leading the National Faith and Liberty Discovery Center, I am just so immeasurably blessed because it combines, and I think, I think in a, in a God divinely driven way, what we should be all about. And that is having faith that comes from a loving God, that then from that uh, uh, you have justice, or excuse me, uh, liberty, which then leads to justice. Yeah. And in an era where people are confusing those words, we think we have an important uh, uh, story to tell. Yeah, yeah. Well, they are inseparable, aren't they? I mean, this is a, it's a wonderful story. I've been to the museum. It's, it's incredible. State of the art, state of the art stuff. What well, is? We're the most interactive called a museum uh, in, in the United States right now, only about 15% of the exhibit are artifacts. We have priceless artifacts. We have William Penn's Bible. We have things that are absolutely amazing. But all our guests receive a lamp. Yeah. You know, let us be a lamp onto the world. And you're able to pick up the content of all the exhibits on the lamp, and all of our guests then receive a password-protected website. So when you go home, all of the content, all the exhibits, all the images that you collected are yours. 
And that's just version uh, 1.0. We have under development some exciting things we're going to hopefully roll out in the next year or so. We'll make it even more interactive so that Christians can learn how important the Old and New Testament uh, were related to our founding in Pennsylvania through the Revolutionary Era, the Constitution Era, and how individuals, even today, most certainly today, rely on the Old and New Testament to work to create a more perfect union. Hmm. And if you're a history buff, you're going to be bathed in Scripture, and you're going to see how I don't think a lot of people even know the role that Scripture played in the founding of the country. You know, so I think part of the beauty of it becomes is uh, this is wonderful for people who are already believers who, who this helps to undergird your faith when you see that the country was founded by these people of faith. But, but how about for folks who may not have a, a faith in, in, in Christ, uh, who come to the center? Uh, who come to the museum and, and, and are just curious. Sure. They're history buffs. I mean, right. is, is there a message for them? Well, there sure is, and John, I'm really glad you asked that question because what you won't see when you visit the Faith and Liberty Discovery Center is an attempt to convert one to Christianity. This is why the center and the museum and how we present the story of how the Bible informed America has received high marks from atheists. So if you're a scholar, the Bible is often referred to as the original text. And throughout our history, whether it's George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, who wasn't necessarily not known if he was a believer or not, no one really knows, to Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Seneca Falls in the beginning, beginning of the women's suffrage movement, relied on Scripture to make their case, to make their case to abolish slavery, to make their case to uh, treat women equally, to make their case to form the checks and balances of a constitutional form of government. So we show how the scriptures, Old and New Testament, not just inspired an individual, but actually informed our founding documents, informed the Civil Rights Movement by Martin Luther King, Letters from a Birmingham Jail, right out of the book of Paul uh, in the book of Romans. Unfortunately, in today's day and age, a lot of that history is not being told. It's being deleted uh, from textbooks, from the digital representation of American history. So we have a calling and we have a civic mission to use discourse, fact, and civility to, to present the truth. And the so, truth so is the scriptures in form America. When you come into the museum, one of the neat things is that uh, on these these huge uh, screens are... are uh, um, you, you see pictured in front of you these great Americans. Yes. Uh, some of them very well known, others not so well known. Right. And, and, and then their story uh, and, and, and what they did and how they impacted, how God was able to use them while they were on the planet. Is there anybody, are there any stories that you can share um, that you think really, really are amazing that, that are just not well known? Well, that would take three hours because, yeah. <laughs> because you just described my favorite part of the entire experience. We call this gallery Liberty's Changemakers. Yes, some are famous like Abraham Lincoln or Frederick Douglass, but by design, these are individuals that grabbed a hold of the Bible and they were going to stamp out injustice. They were going to stamp out slavery. They were going to stamp out uh, how women were treated or children were treated as, as basically indentured service in coal mines. So Jenner Truth. Sojourner Truth was a former slave from New York. Uh, she couldn't read or write, uh, but between her and Frederick Douglass became the most impactful, influential abolitionist uh, during her day. Uh, during her day leading into the Civil War period, during the Civil War, and what is not very known about Sojourner Truth, a black woman well into her 60s and 70s, had a significant role in the Reconstruction period uh, after the Civil War, which didn't go very well, by the way. And here you have someone who probably would have never thought that she would be placed by God in this role. But you know how she started her mission? Yeah. Jesus called her in the middle of the night. Mm. By the way, most history books don't tell that anymore, a story about uh, Sojourner Truth, but she was called by Christ to serve. and. Her primary mission in life was to bring people to Jesus. Her secondary mission in life was through that, to show that you should serve and love and forgive your enemies, whether you were a slaveholder or a Southern uh, Confederate general, is that slavery was an abomination. It was an abomination 
and a stain on our constitutional form of government. It was an abomination and a sin in the eyes of our loving God. And so she clearly, literally represents faith and liberty. Yeah. Didn't she give that famous speech about ain't I a woman or something? Uh, yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was a bit of a background between her and Frederick Douglass. You know, Frederick Douglass started his abolitionist uh, career, if you will, uh, like others say, we just need to completely start over, that we have uh, illegitimate government. The Constitution is no longer working uh, because there is no grand equality for all. He, bit, he bit, then had a bit of an epiphany and realized, no, 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 as Lincoln did, the Declaration of Independence was the seminal document of our history. And to work through a constitutional form of government, through, through the political system for that change. And they had a break there um, because uh, she felt that uh, women were just as equal as men. And there were a lot of, not just white men, but black men during that age that didn't uh, view that. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, yeah. we all, we're, all, we're all sinners, we all have warts. Little known fact about Elizabeth Cady Stanton, she used the first 11 chapters of Genesis to make the case for equal rights for women at the first gathering in Seneca Falls, New York, which is still celebrated today. However, she never thought the black man or the black woman should have the right to vote. Yeah, uh, yeah. She didn't see them as equal. So the journey continues today. The reason I'm so optimistic and absolutely love where uh, the Lord has put uh, me in this role of service is today is I think there's a lot of work to do in the Republic called the United States of America. Well, there is. But we have guarantees of liberty. We have that First Amendment uh, that guarantees our freedom of conscience and religion and speech. And I don't get too caught up in the sound bites and the tweets because I think it's all organized to continue to divide people. I think if we walk in faith, if we forgive others as uh, we have been forgiven, and if we serve and love others, there's no telling where God is going to drive us. There's a great uh, line of scripture in the Old Testament, I think it's in either Leviticus or Numbers, where, what do you think, God has a short arm? <laughs> God has two long arms that can wrap around and, and make a change that we can't ever imagine. And that's why our little patch on Independence Mall, and I encourage your guests to come and visit us, we're right across the street from the Liberty Bell, right on that hallowed ground, to come and be inspired by the story of faith and liberty, because we all got work to do. Yeah, we do, we do. I mean, we have a, you served also in the state senate, which is a, a great body of, of, of Americans in this commonwealth. And uh, uh, while probably a majority of the members would ascribe to, uh, would, would self-identify as Christian people, uh, you're hard pressed to find the kind of kindness and, and love and, and civility that you would expect among people of faith. Is, am I right in saying that? Well, so legislative bodies are not normal. Yeah. Uh, it, there's no contract that binds a relationship. Literally, your word is your bond. Your handshake is your bond. So it works when there are men and women of integrity that start with that simple fact. You'll do what you say and you'll say what you do. Because it's the only place where there is no nothing that binds together. There's no marriage contract, there's no commercial contract, et cetera. I found it to be a very civil body. Uh, one of my best friends on the floor of the Senate, we would gather since we both uh, left the Senate, was a, a Democrat, uh, a, a non-Christian Democrat, but just uh, had a heart of gold. I think the mainstream media likes to blow up uh, individuals that are not civil. And I think the majority of the folks that I had the honor to serve with were really good human beings yeah. that were civil and they were there to try to do the right thing That's, and reach compromise. That is so encouraging to hear. What, just a wonderful thing for, for our listeners, our viewers to hear. Um, we're talking about Philadelphia's newest attraction, Faith and Liberty Discovery Center. When we come back, I'll talk to Rob about the state of faith in America and how citizens like you can help the next generation understand the truth about our national story. Learn more about Joe Watkins and the mission of this program at joewatkins.net. And tell Joe what you thought about today's program in the comment box. Faith and Liberty Discovery Center is located on Philadelphia's historic Independence Mall, next to Independence Hall and the Constitution Center. Visit faithandliberty.org to plan your visit. Uh, we've been there already, my wife and I. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. 
Uh, Senator, so um, uh, I'm encouraged by what you said. Uh, one, of the, one of the nice things uh, that I also recall is that when you were selected, um, um, uh, former Mayor Wilson Good, a, a, a prominent Democrat, um, was very positive about it, just thought it was a great selection. Uh, and, and so that obviously that goes beyond political party or, or whatever your political ideology may be. To see that kind of camaraderie and, and respect, mutual respect, is, is wonderful. Well, the mayor and I go way back. Early in my career, I had the honor to serve in the uh, Tom Ridge administration. I was Deputy Secretary of Transportation and worked uh, with then Mayor Rendell. And, and uh, Wilson was important uh, as he would just finish his term as mayor. But I really met uh, him as a very young Christian in my early 20s through an organization at the time developed the Philadelphia Prayer Breakfast. And we would always have faith conversations, not political conversations through the years. And I was very honored that he agreed to speak publicly uh, regarding my announcement. Too many politicians uh, quickly asked the question in a cynical way, why is someone making that choice? And I thought it was important um, with the announcement to have someone who served in an elected role, who's now <laughs> an ordained pastor, <laughs> among other things, speak to that. Because I do think that you can exercise your faith with civility in a public role, whether you're elected or appointed or otherwise. And I think we need more of that. I think citizens should uh, provide some grace to elected officials instead of drawing outlandish conclusions about something that clearly is a myth and, and is not gonna happen in the United States of America anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. So you've got this daunting task. You've got this wonderful museum, which is state of the art, and uh, which I will, I've actually visited a couple times, and I, I, I intend to, if God uh, blesses us with life, to, to go back again and again and again. How do you get people to come visit? Well, this is our really our first full year. You know, we were locked down during the pandemic, and there's just been some organizational changes. So when I say this is our first full year, Come year 2023, you're going to hear more about us. We're spending a significant amount of resources, advertising on social media, mainstream legacy media, bus wraps, billboards. We're out there to let uh, citizens in this region and points know beyond that we're open for business. We're affordable. It's only 10 bucks to get in. Uh, if you're a bit older, <laughs> less, or if you're a bit younger, even less. Uh, so we're going to let people know that. For sure. We're also starting to bring scholars in with a series of lectures. We, we are rooted in scholarship and we want to keep telling the story at the location and across the land, how the Bible informed our founding era and is inspiring people today. So encourage your uh, visitors to come. If I'm on site, give you a Cook's tour, behind the scene <laughs> tour, because it really is an amazing experience. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering if uh, because of the pandemic, uh, uh, a lot of the, the traffic that the Independence Mall would get is probably falling off. Uh, it's gonna be a wow, but by most uh, independent forecast, the historic museum and des destination business in the city of Philadelphia, which has amazing from the, you know, from the Barnes, the Museum of Art, to the Franklin Institute, to the American Revolutionary, Museum, most economists think that we're still a good two years away from getting to that post-pandemic level of, of visitation. Uh, because uh, Philadelphia was locked down a significantly longer period of time than say other, say southern cities, for example, that have similar venues. And there's just uh, high inflation and uncertainty about the economy. Look, I view these as very short-term headwinds. We're on a long-term journey, and that's why we're physically located on Independence Mall, not going anywhere. Uh, and what's a year or two behind some sort of man-made schedule when God has the ultimate plan for this? I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, I just can't wait to, to see uh, people flocking back to Independence Mall and coming to the Faithland Liberty Discovery Center because uh, it's a great destination and uh, it, it's so exciting. And uh, to learn stuff that you never knew is just for me, just, just, just amazing to see the role that the Bible, the scriptures have had. Uh, Rob Wunderling is executive director of the Faith and Liberty Discovery Center in Philadelphia, but more importantly, he's a believer someone who has discovered that true joy doesn't come from being someone, but from knowing someone. That's Jesus. 
We'll be right back with our great producer, Jeff Coleman. You're watching Joe Watkins' State of Independence on Lighthouse TV, positively different. Share your comments about today's program in the comment box at joewatkins.org. And now let's talk to our great producer, Jeff Coleman. Well, Rob says a lot of interesting things, and uh, I think one of the areas that we're at this point in our culture where we're asking people to be nice and to be civil and to do politics differently, but if it's not connected to a value system, yeah. and if it's not connected to a permanent set of truths, it's impossible yeah. to stitch America back together, because yeah. what's the premise? If everyone is going in different directions and everyone's kind of defining what they feel is right, you have a very difficult time putting America back together. So I think going back and saying, look, he mentioned letters to the Birmingham jail, and you, know, you have here, uh, of, of those principles that he wrote on, uh, Dr. King wrote on nonviolence, specifically that you are not there to destroy the, the opponent. Can you imagine mm -hmm. if the goal of a political debate of a, was discussion and learning and then to advance an idea and not to just destroy another person. But where does that come from? It comes from the pages of the Old and New Testament yeah. that we described today. Well, that's what I love about the biographies, because you learn, you know, we've always had challenges. I mean, the country's always had challenges at, at different points in its history. Yeah. And to learn about how individuals dealt with it, uh, Christian people, what they did, right. which may not have been so popular at the time, but what they did, which helped to change our country, make it a better place. How different to be able to walk through that experience on uh, Independence Mall and, uh, and to have children now learn mm -hmm. that these, these people were real, <laughs> not yeah. just <laughs> statues, not just a footnote, not just a wiki page, yeah. but really people that struggled with complex ideas, thinking about Elizabeth Cady Stanton and having the complexity of saying she was, she was getting this part right, <laughs> Uh, but she might have had this part wrong, which she did on slavery. Yeah. Fascinating. And I think um, a wonderful place to begin the conversation about knowing the true story of America. Amen, brother. Amen. Great story. Great story. Uh, America isn't just the story of men and women with faces carved into the side of a mountain or memorialized on the National Mall. Underneath the grand story are hundreds of thousands, millions of simple acts of faith, trusting God for the impossible and seeing him do great things. If you have a minute this week, let me know what God has done in your life when he parted the seas for you and made a way. You can send a comment straight to me at the comment box at joewatkins.org. Thanks to my friend Rob Wonderling, our great former state senator, for sharing his journey with us and keeping America's true story alive. From America's first capital, Philadelphia, I'm Joe Watkins, along with Jeff Coleman and the great team at State of Independence. Thanks so much for watching. God willing, I'll see you next week. So I, I love in the museum the stories of these people because you can see how God can take somebody who came from nothing and do something marvelous with their lives. Yeah, and it, and it's, it's not, you're not scrubbing the story. You're saying that this was the piece that informed the great act. Joe Watkins' State of Independence is a production of Lighthouse TV, positively different, made possible in part because of the support of viewers like you.